Wonderful. My name is Mario Denton. On this program, Your Journey Defined. We're talking about willingness. We're talking about obedience in your mandate. And uh, this is like the end of this series of discussions. We started with God's economy and man's economy. We look at the purpose of business. We look at ownership. We look at finances. We look at people management practices. We look at ethics. And now I want to close with sound governance. Now, I'm not sure if you've listened to these discussions before, but I personally believe we've got the answer. And, but I'm not going to give it away. So I'm going to ask you, listen to me, listen to me. And then right towards the end, I'm going to give you simple advice, how to apply it, where is it coming in, and the best way to implement these type of things. Because we're living in a world that people want to see more and more and more sound governance. Now, again, I want to be practical. Um, when I lecture on these topics, I often use this as the basis. Uh, this is something that I do now. I'm going to do it again with people. It doesn't matter which part of the world. And what we do in discussions like this, we take people through, and I want you to listen to this. The, give me the ultimate model of leadership. Give me some leadership principles and assessments and how do we do it? How do we redefine leadership? And that's part of this discussion, and that's what we're going to do today also. Um, what do we do when we see trust gaps? People are not engaged. What are, are there different leadership styles, and can you analyze it for me? Uh, can you talk about specifically servant leadership? How do we develop servant leadership? Um, how do we deal with all these things like, um, you know, situational ethics and anger and all these type of things? Um, how do we influence people upwards, downwards, and, and all these type of things? What about courageous conversations? Where does that fit in? Talk to me about the signs of leaders in trouble, um, and how do we move from success to significance? So, but today we're going to bring in these type of things when we're going to talk about governance. Um, then we talk about the new wave of challenges. What do we see? Um, and, and how do we change the story? So this is, for me, such an appropriate time to close this session with sound governance. And uh, I want to ask you, as we go through it, as we discuss it, you will see it where it's coming from. I'm going to give you some tips from a business point of view as well as from a personal point of view. And then again, I want to say these type of things. We've got this information. It is powerful. You need to apply these type of things. And I'm going to share with you also how do we get started. So I'm going to give you some principles. Um, one of the first principles that I'm going to ask you is that um, it's like principles like obedience. Are you still obedient? Uh, and a lot of people can say, yeah, Mario, depends. Things like, uh, are you looking for wisdom? Where is your wisdom coming from? Uh, things like, are you compliant with the laws of your country and where is that? why is that so important? Uh, do you respect authority? Yes or no? Uh, and what about accountability? So I'm going to give you these statements and I want you to ask you listen to me and you please, I'm going to tell you where is this coming from and how to apply these type of things. But this is, always, this is the sound governance from a business perspective. And I'm going to give you also the sound governance from a personal perspective. So the next one is, uh, do you focus on things like your unique purpose? L listen to this. Do you really understand priorities? Uh, do, you, do you have a business, business mission statement and objectives? Um, is it aligned? And what about conflict and all these type of things? What about the well-being of people before money? Now, I want you to write this in because in your corporate governance, and I talked to, you know, I was at one stage busy with and having discussions with Professor Mervyn King on, on all these principles, but this is still the best governance principles that I would like to recommend. So when you do it, and you will see it. You put all these type of things in the document. Very important. The third one is, do you have clear lines of authority? Uh, is your marketing statement truthful? Do you have accurate business accounts and reports? Do you have hidden agendas, yes or no? So I know if you complete this and you can tick off yes, 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 you're going to get some full marks. It is tough. And uh, right at the end, as part of the next session, I'm going to tell you where is this coming from? What have we done? 
So then we look at things like, um, you know, do you provide proper rest and recreation and reflection for your staff? And that's a very important principle because do you have, um, do you give them breaks and vacation? What about evaluation and planning and reflection? And do you have adequate staffing for the workload? So the principle here is about um, do you provide rest and recreation and reflection? The previous principle, do you use effective communication in word and in deed? The other one is all about, do you focus on your unique purpose? Yes or no? Key things for your, for your corporate governance. The next one is, do you learn from the experience and wisdom from older people? It is important that you put this into your, your governance statement. And here is all about, do you seek counsel f of those with experience? Yes or no? Uh, do you honor the culture and customs of those that you do business with? Yes or no? Do you even employ older people or as leaders, as role models? And what about discrimination? Do you allow discrimination on age basis and all these type of things? So the principle here is all about learn from the experience and wisdom of older people, of other people. So I know you can, when you listen to me say, Mario, you know, I'm now confused. Where are you coming from? Where, where is this? But please, I'm not giving all the evidence right now for you, but I'm going to promise you this is so important. The next principle is, do you show respect for human life, dignity and rights? It must be in your corporate governance. Things like, do you treat others as you want them to treat you? Uh, do you protect your health and safety of employees? Um, what about your policies, your competitive practices? You need to understand these type of things. So this is like a checklist and I want you to complete this. I'm going to forward this to you because it makes so much impact on me. Um, the next one is you need to maintain a stability in your family and all the sexes. So what are we saying? Sexual relationships outside marriage is unacceptable. We need to apply these type of things. Uh, we need to give priority to family life. We need to have equal employment opportunities for both men and women. And we need to make decisions also in, in line with our needs and our families and all these type of things. A great the best, let me repeat, the best. And I want you to take me on because I'm going to share with you where this is coming from. I want you also, um, this is principle number eight, make correct use of resources entrusted to you. Are you doing that? Yes or no? Uh, are you what about your responsibility? What about your accounts payable and receivable on time? What about the incentives? What about bribes or kickbacks? Are you accepting it? Yes or no? What about regard for people's gifts and talents? A powerful one. Seriously. Um, and I'm just giving you these corporate governance, but from a business perspective. Number nine, do you base all your communication on the truth and facts, not only feelings? Uh, what about compromise? What about accurate reporting? What about, you know, do you honor your commitments? Now, this is why I want to repeat this and don't see this as a surprise. Lots of companies got lots of these code of ethics and governance. And I know it's not working. Something is missing and it's not going to work because I'm going to share with you where this is coming from. Um, the things like uh, based all your communication, on truth and facts. I want to repeat that again. This honor commitments. And then the 10th principle is here is honor the right of ownership. Um, it's talking about innovation and all these principles. Now, it may be that you listen to me and say, Mario, I'm not sure, but today I'm now confused. I'm not even sure where you are. You're talking about corporate governance. I've never heard about these type of things. Please guide me, guide me, guide me. But before I'm going to give and tell you all about these type of things, um, I want to give you also the examples of on a personal note, your, and I believe that if you don't have it, put it in the family. Put the corporate governance in the family. Principles like consult with your family before making family decisions. Uh, respect your, your spouse's authority and also with the kids. Very important. We've got governance also in our workplace, but also in our personal life. Things like, um, do you have a personal life and a mission statement? Things like... Um, you know, there's certain things in your life you don't realize I should actually allow these type of things. What is your corporate governance in your personal life? Um, your listening skills, your communication skills. Do you use effective communication in your personal life? Yes or no? Um, do you provide proper rest and recreation and reflection? Yes or no? 
Uh, do you have a day of worship? Um, do you have reflection as a family? I love these principles. And I know now that you've listened to me, you say, Mario, please come on, man. Do we need to wait for the next season? I'm saying, yes. Um, do you respect the elders and grandparents? Do you show your children that your spouse is a high priority? Yes or no? Oh, this is wonderful. Um, what about things like respect for the human life? Do you allow verbal abuse to your children? Do you control your anger? Do you seek to develop your children? Yes or no? Such an important topic. What about uh, stability in the family? And I'm talking about teaching your children, you know, in terms of the principles of marriage and the equality of sexes and all these type of things. Um, what about, you know, the resources, your financial responsibility? What do you do that's entrusted to you? Um, do you model that type of behavior? And then also about communications. Do you keep your commitments? Do you tell the truth? What is your lifestyle? Is it materialism? Is it a Christian lifestyle? Do you respect your neighbors in terms of property? Um, and have even your children reached their goals? Now, I've been very quickly, very quickly, I repeat, but for a reason to give you some sound governance principles. And the question is, Mario, where is that coming from? Have you developed it? Is it old? Is it, I've never heard about these type of things. Uh, and in the next season, I'm going to go back and please, you're going to enjoy it because I'm going to take you through these vital, important principles. I don't want you to miss it. And from now on, I know once you apply these type of things, you don't need another set of corporate governance principles. You will enjoy it because what I want you to do is practice this, apply it, do the assessments because it's all about sound, solid governance. We need it desperately. I will be back and I'm looking forward. We're going to take a short break. Do we understand these different seasons? We try our best to help people to be successful. As people move on with their lives, there is a desperate need to move on to the season of significance. In our research on managerial degeneration and self-neglect, we have found that managers easily understand the importance of strategic thinking and when to have team building sessions with their staff but often fail to apply those same processes in their own lives. Use your willingness and obedience now. Start your journey to be a facilitator today. When trained as a facilitator, you will have the opportunity to serve people in a very unique way. We are keen to take you through this wonderful training. Let the rest of your life be the best part of your life. Sound governance, we've discussed this so far, but now I want to go a step further. I want to go into the detail. I want to explain to you where is this coming from? Why is it so important? So let's look at the first principle. The first principle of sound governance, listen to this. Honor God in all you do. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. Principle number one. So it's talking about, you know, obedience. It's talking about wisdom. It's talking about respect, authority. It's all about accountability. Principle number one. Principle number two, focus on your unique purpose. And where is this coming? And, you know, what is the point here? It's about you shall not make for yourself an idol. Principle number two. And you know where is it standing and what is it? So it's talking about your priorities. It's talking about your corporate objectives and all these type of things. Principle number three, use effective communication in word and deed. And you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Powerful corporate governance principle is talking about, do you have clear lines of authority? Your statements is a truthful yes or no. Do you have hidden agendas? That's principle number four. Principle number five, provide proper rest. Recreation, reflection, where is this coming from? Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Yeah, this is biblical principles. So we're talking about, you know, do you have a lot of breaks for your staff? Are they working seven days a week? Yes or no? And then learn from the experiences and wisdom from older people. Um, honor your father and your mother so that you may live long. You know, this is powerful stuff. So we say seek counsel for those with experience, honor and employ other people and what's up for discrimination. So 
again, principle or sound governance, number five. Number six is about showing respect for human life, dignity and rights. You shall not murder. That's the principle. So treat others as if you would want them to treat you. And uh, it's always about protecting health and the safety of other people. Number seven, maintain a stability of the sexes in the family. What is it all about? You shall not commit adultery. And I know when you listen to me, say, Mario, I never thought this is so applicable for sound governance and said, yes, you shall not commit adultery. So we're talking about um, specifically how do you make decisions? What is it all about in this case? Number eight, make correct use of resources entrusted to you. And this is all about you shall not steal. Um, so we're talking about no bribes, no kickback, no regards for personal gifts and beliefs and, and, and talents and all these type of things that you need to be very careful when you receive it. Number nine, base your communication on the truth and facts. So we say you shall not give false testimony. So um, truth, what is the truth? Don't compromise. Be careful how you report on all these type of things. And number 10 is honor the right of ownership of property. You shall not covet. So he's talking about, you know, what type of decisions are you making? So what are we saying? When I prepared myself for this topic of corporate governance, this session is all about really giving you a deeper understanding of sound governance. How do you combine it with ethics? Um, and, and I just want to repeat this in this, and I want, this is powerful words. We have taken the Ten Commandments and translated them into everyday common business language. These principles then become a guide for operating business. We are not changing the original commandment, please, and its source. God is the source. I want to repeat that. But instead, we are expanding its commandment into a principle and showing practical ways how to apply this in business. That's what we need. And this is why I, I, I want to repeat this. I am the Lord your God. You shall not have other gods before me. You shall not make yourself an idol. These are very important. You know, it's still applicable. Even if you apply this in your personal life, honor God in all that you do. So he's talking about, you know, do you consult with your family and do you respect your spouses and all these type of things? Do you focus on unique purpose? Uh, you shall not make yourself an idol. Do you have a personal mission statement? What about your idols in your own life? So I want to ask you, please apply these principles. This is the basis. This is the starting point. Imagine if this was the basis right through the world and we apply these type of things. Why do we need so much, you know, policies and practices? This is what we need. This is it. So when you apply this, even in the family communication, how do you speak? How do you listen? Very important. Um, do you have a day of worship? What, you, what about your respecting your elders and your grandparents? What about respect? What about abuse, of, not abuse? How do you develop your children? What about teaching your children? Fundamental principles. Now, I know you can say, Mario, oh, I've never thought about this, that it's coming out of the Bible. It's so applicable. I thought this is Old Testament. There's no use anymore. I'm saying no, 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 no. So I want to repeat. I think the tough thing is, is if you want to go ahead with these sound corporate covenant principles. Mario, how do we start? And that's a, not an easy one. How do we start? And, and I want to repeat this. This is not a lot of laws or bylaws. It's not a way of sanctioning people. It's, 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 a, it's a set of core values. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's a way to motivate other people. It's a task of leadership. And, and so we need to sit down and say, well, listen, okay, now I understand it. Now what can we do about these type of things? Um, the this is very powerful. It's got strategic value and implications. So I want to say again, you know, it can help you in direction of the company. You can strengthen. You can challenge people. But I don't want you to, you know, give it in a, in a new format, in a discussion, because it can give you really some guidelines and say, well, listen, this is the way we operate our business and apply these principles. They will enjoy it. I know it. I know they will enjoy it. But to apply these principles, it is back to about leadership. You need to have great, solid, good leadership. You, you're going to have what we call long-term thinking. Um, it must, there must be support for it. Um, and, you know, the workers and the, all the co-workers, they must buy into this. Um, so what I'm saying also, consult with your people, talk to them, ask for feedback, evaluate and learn. But we need to start because sound governance, it's open for lots of debate. But if we've got these fundamentals in place, 
I think we can have a new way of looking at sound governance. And this is why it is so important. Sound, sound governance to me. So how do we communicate it? We communicate these codes. We discuss it with business people. We apply these type of things. Uh, we can train people and we can have it. And, and again, from my side, I'm saying my advice to you in this short session of sound governance, go back to the basis again, apply these principles, talk to your management, talk to leadership, ask them what is the code of practice, how can we implement this? And the reason why I'm saying this is because I'm coming back to this booklet about effective leadership. I want you, at the end of the day, I want you to finish strong. I want you to be a faithful person. And um, I've asked myself again, what is this? why is it often that people don't finish well? And it's about nine principles that I want to close this session with in terms of so, um, solid governance. And listen to this. Um, finally, leaders are committed to finishing their lives well, but what is stopping them to do it? Number one is they don't have this, this passion, this intimate relationship with the Lord. But in other words, the, the ethics and the governance is going down and down and down and down and down. The second one is they don't have an humble spirit anymore. They don't know even their own strengths and their weaknesses. The third one is they don't have a healthy relationships with their spouse and the family. They don't resolve the conflict. The conflict is disappointment, is distance, is just growing bigger and bigger, and it's like an emotional divorce at the end of the day. It's back to governance and back to ethics. Um, they are not in, you know, they don't even have a simple lifestyle. Remember, this is the closing part of all this corporate governance principles and uh, specifically God's economy, but they, they're not living debt three. That's a very important principle. They've lost their calling in their life. They lost their priorities in life. They are not engaged in a ministry where there's discipleship and evangelism. To me, it's important. And I want to ask you again, if you ask me, Mario, this training that you guys are doing. What is it all about? Is it about your journey to find saying, no, it's about evangelizing others. It's about discipleship. I want you to take note of it and write and connect with us. Um, I want you to be, to continue to be a learner, to read, to learn new things, to be engaged. So that's a great opportunity for the things that we've discussed. And then I want always, I want to close with this. I want you to keep a kingdom mindset. God at work, as we call it. So when you apply these type of things. So let me start wrapping up. Where do we stand right now? What have we done? We have now completed this series of God's economy and man's economy. And I want to say again to God, all the glory, what a powerful session. We're putting all this information together so that you can make the difference. I'm going to also highlight a couple of things just to wrap it up. But from my side, put sound governance in its rightful place. Apply these 10 commandments in a new way of doing it and you will see the difference in your business as well as in the home. Great stuff. Wonderful. And you know, I normally close with a word of encouragement and I want to do this again because often we ask, so what are you going to do and what are your action plans and uh, how, how do you want to get involved? But listen to the word of encouragement. And I know there's somebody listening to me and said, Mario, yeah, you know, this is great stuff, but I want to encourage you. Listen to this. There is a fresh anointing being released on you. Now to go far beyond the enemy's lines of defense. God is calling you for reason about this journey. Um, and I want you to take it on. God is calling us to seize opportunities right now. And the reason why I'm saying is you've got opportunities. You can go into places. You can apply these type of things. Do not procrastinate any longer. This is so important. It will take self-discipline. It will take courage. It will take perseverance to make these opportunities a reality because God's economy and man's economy is not easy. But we've got this wonderful opportunity. Momentum is born in prayer because without prayer, we're not going to do this. And meditation on the promises of God, what we've discussed in the series so far. Your attitude has such a 
powerful effect on what is happening in your life. You see, this is why when I'm wrapping up this, I'm saying, take this stuff further, apply these principles. And then my final word of encouragement, maintain your enthusiasm in the face of extreme challenges. Do not allow the enemy to intimidate you. So if you're sitting there and, and I'm saying, Mario, I'm struggling with this, please connect with me so that I can help you and assist you because my word of encouragement today is, yes, let's start. Let's give it a go. Apply these type of things. So when you've got time, analyze where, well, you know, what are the action plans? What can you do about it? How do you want to implement these type of things? Because d deep down, our vision is still, I want you to apply these type of things. I want you to learn. I want you, wherever you are, teach other people. So what are we saying? I, I'm asking you, please take it further. There's some beautiful verse that I want to repeat again. It's not how we start the race, it's how we finish the race. So what are you doing right now? How do you want to go and what are the next steps? So from my side, I'm saying, please, if you do have specific prayer needs, if you're asking, listen, Mario, my business is going down. I don't know what to do. Uh, finances is a struggle and all these type of things. I pray specifically as you listen to me that God will provide, that you will suddenly realize there's lots of opportunities that I'm saying, go on your knees. Go on your knees and ask, ask, ask. I believe in these principles. We cannot just ignore these principles. Apply it, apply it. Uh, so I also, when I'm now that I'm closing this, I specifically pray for you. I pray for a fresh anointing. I, uh, I also pray for clarity in what you're doing. Uh, I, I pray for new inspiration that you will experience those type of things because I'm saying we're living in such a wonderful time. We're looking for facilitators, people who connect with us that you can make the difference. So again, I want to say, you know, I just love to close with blessings. Let the rest of your life always, always be the best part of your life. So carry on with all these principles. I pray for protection. I pray for God's protection over you where you are, for every financial decision that you're making, for your family, that God will supply you in all your financial needs. This is all about the principles that we've discussed, and I know you will enjoy it. Remember all these solid principles. We are there to help you, to guide you, just connect with us so that we can forward this information. Don't keep it for yourself. Listen to the YouTube. Get involved. And to me, that's always important. So I want to close the session. I want to say thank you very much. It's great listening. I will be back, but keep on tuning in next week. We will take on a new topic. And my words to you is always be blessed, whatever you do.